What do you think of when you think of brass bands? Marches and their hymn tunes? Miners and their galas? Or films such as Brass Off or more recently Pride, which both feature brass band music? When I think of brass bands, I think about warm sounds and I think about enjoyable music making and socialising. When I think of brass bands, I think of the, the history and the heritage uh, that we have. We've got um, over 100, 150 years worth of, of history and, and some really famous bands going there. I always think of the heritage of our area, the, you know, the, um, the mining industry, and around here, every village had a band. So it's a massive heritage that we, we need to maintain. When I think of brass bands, I think of primarily it's music making. Uh, a group of musicians, brass musicians, and we all come together for a common purpose to play brass instruments and create a band. But I also think on, on the personal side, I think of uh, the friendships that I've gained and the places I've been able to travel and the things I've been able to do that have only really been allowed by being in a brass band. Whit Monday, that isn't there anymore here, when we used to march all around the village with the band and sing hymns at various places. Uh, I also think about the community ethos and the sort of socialised sociability of brass bands and possibly a few other clichés as well involving village fates and uh, Whit Friday, <laughs> some of which are true. When I think of brass bands I think of happy days and hard work as a youngster and in the modern day of presenting them on radio and it's a sound like no other. And Remembrance Sunday, the service in church it also, it also reminds me as well of my childhood, because everybody remembers brass bands when they were a child. Brass banding has a long history in the Cone Valley area, particularly Slowitz, in which bands have been around with short gaps from the early 1800s. The present brass band organisation in Slowitz has been in existence since 1892 and can pride itself on winning the prestigious Grand Shield twice, the British Open twice, and appearing at the national finals three times in 2004, 2005 and 2008, a position which the band find themselves in again this year after becoming Yorkshire third section champions at the Yorkshire Regional Brass Band Championships, or the area, on the 7th of March. More recently, Slowitz have notched up their prize collection through winning the entertainment contest held in Ripon Cathedral, scooping first place and most entertaining programme. The band's success since its formation was also reflected through attracting world-famous composer Hayden Wood, who wrote a march Merrydale for the band, first performed in 1948 and recorded by the band in 1975. I spoke to Hilda Haig, a local resident of Slowick for over 89 years and who regularly attends the band's concerts in the band room and St James's Church. I lived at Westwood. Do you know where Westwood is? Which, well, it's just out of Slaffwood, up on the hill, for five years. I've known the band a long time. Well, it's uplifting, always uplifting. It's stirring, that's the other word I say, stirring. And because I've got a family in, I'm interested all, all over again. You know, what I always have been. I think they're wonderful. Um, and all the time that they give to rehearsals. When I was in bed, a little girl at Varley Road, and the band used to split in half at Christmas Eve, half up this side and half up the other side of the valley. And I said to my mum, you'll wait and be up when the band comes, won't you? They were playing right outside my window, of course. So that, that was one thing. And of course, when they played Burnage Villa, you know that well, though, yes. Yeah. That, that, that was the band tune before the lady wrote the words to it. Why oh, knew? Oh, wow. That's nice, isn't it? That's lovely. My boys, David, Deborah's father, David and John, his elder brother, they were choir boys at the church, and the first time it was sung, they sung it over the telephone to her on Christmas Day. So that's a wonderful memory, isn't it? Well, a bit more recent than that. Uh, a sing in the cricket field each year. Do you know what I mean by a sing? Well, 
the band plays and people who are out of choirs right. get together and sing. And we used to sing in the cricket field once a year, a hymns and choruses like From the Messiah, things like that. And once, I only remember once, uh, there was one in uh, Merrydale. Do you know where Merrydale is? Yes. Yes, up there, in a field up there, we had a thing. I went and marched up with the band, which it's exhilarating. That's, that's what it is, exhilarating. When we used to march all around the village with the band and sing hymns at various places. That's one of my wonderful memories of the band. I loved it. And Remembrance Sunday, the service in church, and then I was a girl guide, so I marched with the band round to the centre staff from being 11 years old. I joined the church choir at 16, so I was still a good girl guide. And, um, and I marched with the band for nearly 60 years round to the centre staff, which I loved. Wow. Concerts love in the band room. Lots of them I go to, and in the parks, Raymond Park, Bro um, uh, Beaumont Park, Greenette Park. I followed the band everywhere, the bands. Yes. David Hoyle presents Yorkshire Brass on Sundays for BBC Radio Leeds and BBC Radio York, and has close connections with Slowit Band comparing the annual proms concert in St James's Church over the past few years. Uh, well, my connections with Slathwaite Band were, uh, I was brought here to this band room by my parents at the age of five, uh, with a cornet that I got for Christmas, um, which I've still got, <laughs> not playable any longer, but I was brought here at five, um, had many happy years as a young man, training to play a brass instrument and work my way through into the main band. Um, I would hope the local community of Slathwaite very much see them as part of everyday life in the village. Part of me, being a bit of a cynicist sometimes, thinks people do look at brass bands and say, it's Christmas, I love to hear a brass band, and that's totally wrong because we're here 365 days a year, but locally I think the band are well received, well respected, and um, people do support, perhaps more than they do in other areas, which is nice. Um, the relevance of brass banding in today's society, I would say, is it's important that we do have brass bands. I don't think people realise the importance of brass bands and the ones who take the trouble with the children to start them playing in brass bands actually are putting their children into a good and enriching way of life from an early age and I wish more people would actually do it because being brought up in a brass band or any music fraternity is, is wonderful and it's a great way to enjoy your life. Music you know, is, is the be all and end all if you're brought up the right way. Slowitz Band Room on Inghead Road is purpose built for the band and has stood on this site since 1925, playing host to not only rehearsals, but also concerts and hired events. As a band member, this is where all my friends are. It's what I do as a hobby, I'm here most nights, um, definitely Monday, Tuesday, Friday, I'm always here, it's where my friends are. It's what we do as our fun time. Oh, the national finals this year for us is going to be a major achievement. Um, it's a few years since we did it before. Uh, the conductor's been here two years and it's a, it's a big significant thing for him to have got this far so quickly. Rob Westercott is the musical director of Slowit Band, a position he has held since September 2013 and with various successful contest results under his belt. Rob talked to me about the band's recent area win and the national finals which are fast approaching. I'm very proud of the results we've had recently with the Slathwaite Band. Uh, the pinnacle obviously being uh, the, area, uh, the area contest where we came first, qualifying us for the uh, national finals down in Cheltenham. Uh, and it's all the result of the hard work that the band puts in twice a week uh, and we've reaped the rewards at the concerts and the contests after. 
So to, to take us to Cheltenham, um, we've got obviously got a few months worth of rehearsals. Uh, we'll be doing splitting the band down into smaller sections and working on on the on the sections. I hope to get some uh, some friends in that'll help me do that. Uh, some of the really experienced people in the movement, and then we just build slowly uh, so that we're ready a good couple of weeks ahead of the the finals in September. So between now and the finals, we've got uh, three concerts. We've got uh, two. Uh, outdoor Sunday afternoon ones uh, which are really family orientated and then we have our uh, annual proms concert uh, and I'm delighted to say the guest uh, soloist for this concert is David Morris the, the world whistling champion he's going to join the band uh, in the, uh, the last night of the prom set and do some solos within the band concert. Uh, the band are going to Cheltenham this year to, for the finals and we're needing to raise around about £5,000 which is quite an astronomical uh, amount of money to raise uh, as well as running the band on a day-to-day -day basis um, we also need to raise this extra money which is an extra five thousand pounds in order to raise the five thousand um, pounds the band have had to do a lot of fundraising we've had so far uh, a couple of coffee days or coffee mornings which have been very successful uh, we've also had a race night up in the band club here which has again raised quite an amount of money um, we've got um, a clothing sale yesterday, uh, we've got a handbag sale, all sorts of different sorts of uh, things and also we're, we're applying to some grants as well for some money as well. Uh, the band has had some recent uh, individual donations and in the past, but like many bands uh, we have a, a mixed funding model. So that means we rely on a mixture of earned income from performance fees, uh, ticket income as well, um, also fundraising events that the band organises itself and the occasional grant as well. So the band is set up as a uh, registered charity and a company limited by guarantee. That's something that we did about four years ago to try and ensure the sustainability of the band by having a sort of solid and appropriate up-to-date governance model because the band dates back to uh, the 19th century. Um, so the aims of the band are classed as charitable so it made sense for us to go down that route and we've also set up a separate trading company for the bar as well. Uh, it means as a registered charity we are eligible to apply for certain grants from trusts and foundations uh, that you have to be a registered charity to apply for. To keep itself going I guess, for the band, it's, it's, a really, it's a sort of constant cycle of performances um, and fundraising as well and, and recruitment because obviously we need to have the players. Uh, and also I think to keep the band going there's also the need to create and maintain social opportunities to create a sort of sense of community with the band and a, a sort of shared sense of belonging and commitment amongst the members. So going forward, uh, obviously from January the 1st next year we are promoted to the second section. Uh, which if you think in football in terms is like the third tier of brass banding so we really need to make an impact there uh, we'll be going up against bands that we've never played against before so really good to measure ourselves against those settle into that uh, division really nicely and see where we go from there I think there's possibly two future ambitions for the band um, and one of, of course is musical uh, and the other is more organisational about the, 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 uh, the keeping going for the future musically I'm sure we all want to continue to improve musically as a group and that doesn't just mean uh, doing well at competitions, that's about giving really good quality performances wherever we're playing uh, with interesting and varied repertoire and also committing to our own personal, improving our own personal technique as well. And then organisationally obviously we want to be sustainable uh, for a long time uh, into the future as well. I think for our future I think we just need to um, maintain the standards that we've got or improve the standards that we've got Perhaps aim for a wider audience, get more people coming to look at us and coming to see the things that we do and make sure we still enjoy it. The future ambition of the band is really um, the main thing is we go out, we entertain people to the best of our ability. Uh, the added side to that is that the band are rated as a third section band um, and we have been promoted into the second section uh, which is, gives us a bit more esteem, gives a bit more of a challenge for the band and maybe the following year perhaps we may go into the first section which would be quite an achievement for the band itself.
So Slow It Brass Band are a self-supporting band, which unlike some well-known big name bands, do not have the luxury of sponsorship, who are dedicated to the local community through playing various concerts in the band room in St James's Church. A family band who provide music and entertainment for all ages, giving up their time for free to entertain and work hard to achieve a high level at various contests. In September, Slow It Band will compete against 17 bands in the national finals at Cheltenham Racecourse, being promoted into the second section from January 2016. If you would like to donate to help the band with their trip to the national finals, please follow the link on screen to their Gibby page. And on behalf of the band, thank you.